I'm not sure if this was clear. That's meant to like simulate like steam coming from a a, a city drain. Did you get it? Is that is that ever tracked with anyone? No. Good. I'm not gonna waste too much time on an intro for this video. It's December. Ads are through the roof. So let's just kick it. I forgot my hat. Alright, so shoe on head, leftist, makes videos on the internet. That's basically all there is to know about her. Today we're talking about her recent video regarding Balenciaga and the controversy that came around it. To be transparent, this is the first shoe on head video that I've actually seen, but I remember another time on Twitter where she severely overreacted to a drag show at an ice cream shop. There were children at this drag show, and since drag shows are stereotypically associated with sexuality, she objected to it. One of her criticisms was in regard to a neon sign in the background stating, it's not gonna lick itself. Never mind the fact that the sign was already part of the branding of the ice cream shop itself and was merely extraneous. She affirmed that it's weird because of the incidental double entendre. I'm gonna pull out my favorite catchphrase here. Let's get f real for a minute. Now let's pretend that the sign was actually intended to be there as part of the show and wasn't just an incidental part of the setting. A child walks into the store for some ice cream and they see that sign. What do you suppose happens next? Are you concerned that they're going to be hypnotized or corrupted or some other weird thing? Because your objections to it certainly are making the same arguments as that sort of outrage. It's a joke, Shu. First of all, plenty of children's media already make jokes that are lewd or have innuendo to begin with. Remember this fucking thing? I'm sure this is the inciting incident for a lot of children. If this sign is simply unacceptable for children to see, then are SpongeBob, Uncle Grandpa, Gumball, are they also just unacceptable? You see, if you extrapolate her actual argument, it's so ridiculously Puritan. Not only that, but I really don't buy into the idea that drag shows are inappropriate to children to begin with. There were parents with their children about this, so it's about as equivalent to a PG rating, which is the same rating as shows like RuPaul's Drag Race. But I think introducing children to this context is a fine way to show that queer people are human, and that people can be who they want to be. I understand that there is a stigma that drag queens and drag shows are sexualized, but it's impossible to recontextualize that stigma and remove it unless you are actually challenging it. You can't show the humanity of queer people to children if you don't allow children to interact with them. It'd be like trying to describe color to a blind person. It's just, there would be a degree of separation that you couldn't get past. I understand that could give off some bad vibes to people, but I think people that really have an objection to it are letting their emotions influence their opinions more than their actual intellect. It's just an absurd thing to be upset about. The first segment of the video is dedicated to summarizing the Balenciaga incident, in that they did a photo shoot with children where they had them holding props related to BDSM. They also included a document and a photo from a Supreme Court case related to child pornography. And unsurprisingly, a lot of people were disgusted by the inclusion of children in these photo shoots. Now, my criticisms of the photo shoots and the entire ad campaign to begin with aren't necessarily with the involvement of children. There are films and TV shows that put child actors in pretty adult situations and I don't see an objection with them. The criticisms that I have are related to the actual message Balenciaga is trying to put across here. For example, in Taxi Driver, when 12-year-old Jodie Foster is playing a child prostitute while other guys are depicted as dying in a gunfight around her. In context of the movie, the message is clear that these are bad guys and that child prostitution is wrong. In Balenciaga's case, there's no subtext to imply that child 
movie or any of the things that they're depicting are actually bad. And many people have inferred that this is just to garner a large reaction to get more publicity and buzz to them, but at a certain point, that just kind of falls flat, doesn't it? People have an emotional reaction with children. You can't just include them in something like this with no implication that these are bad things. The remainder of the video I don't really have any objections to, except for a lack of context that I've mentioned previously. Shu has said things that are critical of drag shows that have ultimately contributed to the gay groomer narrative that I've brought up in a couple of videos. A lot of people like Shea Raychik and Tucker Carlson have been trying to tie groomers to gay people so that way they can say that they hate groomers when they really mean is that they hate gay people. And unfortunately Shu's tweets have been picked up by those pundits in a way to criticize groomers when they mean gay people. Now obviously that wasn't Shu's intention but I think her outrage is first and foremost pointless and second of all actually damaging and irresponsible. She's posted an apology that her tweet contributed to that narrative, but ultimately she didn't wheel those opinions back. Now, I'm really not happy with Shu about that, but the criticism that was brought her way was also a bit much. Now, let's put it on a timeline. Shu makes her viral tweet that ended up contributing to the gay groomer discourse. She then deleted it, but continued to double down on her stupid opinion. The next time that people hear about her is her again insinuating that something else is pedophilia. Side note, did you know that 54% of adults in the United States have a literacy below a 6th grade level? Not related to anything here, I just thought I'd point that out. The examples that Shu is showing in the beginning of the segment are likely people overreacting to her stance by drawing a correlation to her previous outrage, without even reading what she is saying. Now after this outrage, Shu then makes a video and in which in the title she says that she's left the left. Shu intentionally made that video title to garner a large public reaction, so she did, from people thinking that this is once again Shu just screaming about how the sky is falling down. This is my best assumption of what an outside perspective of this whole discourse to Shu really looks like. Now this isn't meant to excuse the irrational criticism of Shu. She even points out that this isn't representative of the whole of the criticism drawn her way. And that a lot of people that are making these criticisms don't even watch her content. But I think if Shu wants to help this and not get these sorts of reactions, you could not intentionally piss people off. There's a start. You could stand to not be concerned over stupid shit that ultimately ends up hurting queer people. There's an idea. You could construct and publicly state your opinions more pragmatically instead of your gut reaction. I understand that this isn't helped by Twitter, which is intentionally designed for people to share your waking thought they have. As someone who has dabbled in being famous for a couple days at a time with no explanation, it's easy to forget how much influence what you say actually has on people. But I think it's important to remember that you could inadvertently be doing more damage than change with just one tweet. When you have a reputation like the one that Shu has established for herself, it's tough to ask for due diligence, unfortunately. Especially when you're dealing with the most volatile, reactive humans on the planet. Yes, Shu, it would be nice if every single person that ever interacted with you had a fully informed opinion and watched every second of every video you've uploaded and every character of every tweet you've ever posted to get a full informed context on it. But unfortunately, one bad first impression can trump 20 good impressions. Now let's wrap this up. All of this is to say that Shu's concern over drag queens is stupid, but it doesn't mean that she's right wing for having a stupid opinion. The people against her for the Balenciaga incident need to grow the fuck up and actually listen to the words that she is saying. And ultimately, everyone is stupid, except for the people that are subscribed to this channel. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to like the video. It helps recommend it to other people. Please subscribe if you haven't already and turn on notifications to be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Hope you have a good day, everyone.